Hey, this is Ray Dombrowski. In today's video, I wanna show you how to make ornamental vector frames in Adobe Illustrator Creative Cloud. And the kind of frames I'm gonna show you how to make are these sort of frames that are really highly detailed and actually really easy to work with. So I wanna start out with a nice looking ornamental piece. This can be pretty much anything. It can be something you've scanned in, it can be hand-drawn, or it can be a vector ornament like this. The thing is, no, no matter what, you want to get it to be vector. So if you've scanned it in, you'll need to live trace it. Here, this is already built in vector. And what I need to do is make a straight border piece out of this. So I'll quickly show you how I'm going to do this. I'll just duplicate a copy and it's pretty much up to you how you want to make this border piece. But the one thing is it has to repeat perfectly. So I've got a center piece here and I turn it 90 degrees um, for the right side. And for the left side, I want to duplicate that. Go Command C, Command F to paste in front. And just to make sure the repeat's going to work, I want to reflect that object. So I'll go object transform reflect and I'll pick a vertical axis and I'm going to drag that reflected copy over to the left. Now what I want to do is select the left side and the right side but not the middle piece and I want to group those. So now you have the middle piece and then the two grouped pieces. And the next thing I wanna do is select everything and then go to my horizontal align center button and just click that. And what that does is it centers up everything. The next thing I wanna do is just create a rectangle. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. This is gonna be a clipping mask and we also want to center that up. So again, I've clicked that align tool. Let's select everything and then hit command seven to create a clipping mask. And one more thing I like to do with these is I like to have kind of a rough edge like the top and then the bottom I want to have just for aesthetic purposes. I want to create a just a flat line and I want this to match up exactly with the edges of my border piece that I've, I've created so far and I'll just duplicate that one more time and this one I want to make a little thinner and you know what I think I'll leave a little bit of gap between the border piece and these two two bars under it. Now the next thing I want to do is check to see if the repeat actually works. So let me group all this and what I'll do is option command drag a copy to the left. You could also drag it to the right and it looks like my repeat is working perfectly. There's no gaps, there's no overlap and just zoom in to check it. So that, you can see where I'm going with this. This is gonna be a really cool border. So what I wanna do next is just grab that one border piece and open up your Pathfinder. And here I'm gonna just have that all selected and hit the Merge button and Double click that to isolate it. Select a little bit of the black. Go select same fill color and then select inverse and just delete out any other path of anything that's not black. So now you've got a straight up just black border piece. And here's where the magic starts to happen. So all the versions of Illustrator before Creative Cloud did this where you could drag in, I call it a border piece, but it's actually a brush in Adobe Illustrator. So you drag it into your brushes window 
and it creates a brush. So you want to select pattern brush. And I'll, I'll go back into this in a second, but let me just click OK for now. So before Adobe Illustrator CC, what you could do was just draw some curves and, oops, didn't mean to do that. Let me scale it up a little bit. And what you could do is on that curve, apply the brush. And let me make my artboard really big just so you can see things. And you'll see how that brush slash border, it conforms to the shape of the path that I drew. And these are really awesome for making frames. So the new cool feature in Adobe Illustrator CC is it will automatically generate the outer and the inner corner tiles. So if you have a sharp edge, you now have that, those corner pieces automatically generated. So it's already given me an outer corner tile here. And we'll go in and select an inner corner tile. And it'll give you some options, auto centered, auto between, auto sliced, and auto overlap. I tend to think the auto centered and the auto sliced work better when you're making borders like this. So let's click the auto sliced and just hit OK, and then hit Apply to Strokes. That's, that hasn't changed anything because um, we don't have a sharp edge yet. So just to test this out, I'm gonna draw a rectangle and apply that brush. And already that looks amazing. And that took literally a couple minutes. <laughs> Would have been quicker if I wasn't talking. Um, and so you'll see that these outer corners have been generated. And you'll wonder what's an inner corner. So let me show you. When you draw a path, and let me apply that brush. That's an outer corner and this is an inner corner. So depending on how you have your brush or your frame set up, um, you may want both. So this, is, this thing is awesome, it's really versatile. There are a few pitfalls with Illustrator brushes. One pitfall is if you scale your brush up too high, Illustrator won't be able to adequately generate that brush for you. So see how when I scale it up to two points, there's this really squished part here and then everything else looks fine. You don't want that. So if you're seeing some squashed parts or some really distorted parts, you may just have to play with the distance between the points or the stroke width of your brush. So we can go down to a 0.75, still looks great. 0.5 looks really good. So generally, if you're getting distortion, I would size your stroke weight down, and that'll usually cure a lot of the problems you're having with your uh, brushes. So that's my design tip of the week for this week. Hope you liked that tutorial. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and also check out the links below the video where I've got some free downloads and also some graphic design resources like this.